cataractcoach.com approach to the gummy nucleus. The patient has some pseudoexfoliation, but a gummy nucleus because there's not that much density. It's difficult to split. Now you can see in this picture, look at that red reflex. There's a huge cortical spoke right in the central visual axis. This is why this patient is seeking cataract surgery. So you can see that right there in the center, putting some anesthetic here out of the iris and getting a little bit more expansion of the pupil. And you can see there is some pseudoexfoliation material everywhere. You can see it there right there at the pupil margin. So certainly the patient has pseudoexfoliation in this eye and has a cataract that is mostly these big cortical spokes. Patient's about 70 years old, but there's not a lot of nuclear sclerotic change there. Again, now you can really see all the pseudoexfoliation material there. And again, the main issue is that big cortical spoke. So because there's not a lot of nuclear density, let's say one plus nuclear sclerosis at most, it's going to be tougher to split this nucleus. This is not a nucleus where a quick chop is going to you know, necessarily work very well or a vertical chop. So getting the rexus done, you see I measured there with the forceps, poking in here and then getting a nice rexus of about five millimeter diameter. There we go. Nicely done. And that's going to be right up against that pupil margin because the pupil is about five millimeters here. And so you definitely want a nice five millimeter rexus because, you know, a case like this, especially when the nucleus is relatively soft, I want to try to get it out of the capsule bag if we can, especially given the pseudoexfoliation and the smaller pupil. So there's the nice looking rexus. And now time for some hydro dissection. And fluid wave goes across. That's pretty good. And then the nucleus, there you go. It's come up out of the bag. And you can see also, look, the iris wants to prolapse a little bit, so let's release some of that pressure gradient. That's important. Iris goes back in there, but we did lose viscoelastic, so we could put a little bit more viscoelastic in here. There we go, a little aliquot there centrally to help protect that central corneal endothelium. And now going in with the phaco probe. So here comes the phaco probe going in 2.2 sleeve, going in bevel down, vacuuming a bit. The nucleus did not prolapse fully out of the bag. Let's see if we can just chop it. So vacuum in and try to chop it. And you can see it kind of, this is kind of a chop, but it doesn't really want to propagate because the nucleus has that gummy consistency or texture. So we can try again. I want to get this thing split. Not really working for me. So let me try to bring it up. Even though the chop hasn't fully propagated, if I can bring it up like this, I can hold it in place while I emulsify it. So using a two-handed technique, the left hand with the chopper to help bring the pieces up or that big nucleus up. There you go, getting on a, a good grip on it if I can. And now aspirate the pieces nice and slowly. And we've not removed even half the nucleus yet. So there's still all the nucleus remaining in the bag. Bring it up again. There we go. Now we can finally get it to crumble on itself. So we don't have that satisfying chop, chop, chop that we love to see in these cases because the nucleus just doesn't support that. Remember, one of the fun parts of cataract surgery and one of the challenges is that every case is different. No two cases are identical. And so now here, aspirating out that nucleus, coming up nice and easy, just trying to stay centrally there and get the pieces to come to me. And this is just a slow and steady technique. There's no rush in doing this. I want to take my time. And um, now I'm left with a little bit of a shell, like a thick epinuclear shell, some nuclear pieces that are there. But I want to get that whole thing mobilized and free and get it up out of the caps or bag. And this patient is also a little on the hyperopic side. It's a little bit of a smaller eye. And there we go. Chopper in that safe position. I think we can get the rest with the IA probe. This is a complete cataract case. I'm showing the case start to finish. I think there's a lot of benefit in that, especially for a younger surgeon. So I've adjusted my microscope lights here to emphasize that red reflex. And we'll go inside and remove the cortex. So yeah, that's the... My approach is just kind of uh, take your time and split it up if you can or bring the pieces up out of the caps or bag. And of course, being gentle and cautious the whole time. But here's a case where we, there really wasn't any satisfying chop that was done here. And I would have preferred to do a technique like the tilt and tumble or get it out of the caps or bag or fake a flip, things of this nature. But it just didn't happen in this case. And that's okay. You take it as it comes. So now I've cleaned up the caps or bag very nicely here. Let's put in our cohesive viscoelastic and fill the capsular bag. And there's the edge of the rexus. Now you can see it as it, the viscoelastic expands the pupil. You can see there's the edge of the capsular rexus. Very nice five millimeter rexus. Here comes our lens. Single piece acrylic lens going to go in the capsular bag. And let's deliver that nice and easy. Do a little bit of a wound assist technique. Get that in and put it in. And there it is. It's opening up nicely. 
Now this is one of those preloaded IOLs, which is very easy to in insert with just the one hand. This is the one that has a CO2 cartridge built in and just use your finger as a trigger. And now you can see there's that six millimeter optic, definitely in the capture bag, definitely behind the Rex's edge. Let's remove the viscoelastic from behind the optic as well, get all that out of the eye. And here I use a high flow rate to really wash things out of the eye. And we'll complete the case. The rest of the case should be pretty straightforward. That was a fun one. Remember, every case is a little different and you have a patient like this where you can see a big spoke of cortical change in the central visual axis. You probably know the reason the patient's there is that spoke and not because of any nuclear density or nuclear changes. And so with a soft nucleus, you got lots of different approaches and this is one of them. So if you have a patient with a soft or gummy nucleus like this that doesn't split, try this technique. I think you'll like it. Thanks for watching.